Okay, welcome back to the study hall. This is the August 25th, 2011 edition. Um, the main theme of today is which modifiers, as is normally the case with a sentence correction theme, I would imagine we're probably going to uh, touch on a lot of other things in these problems too. But the main thing connecting these problems is modifiers involving the word which and trying to articulate the use of those a little bit more carefully. Um, before we get started, as usual, we have to articulate the usual rules of the study hall. So if any of you guys are long-term veterans of the study hall, then this will be old news. Otherwise, uh, check it out. So here are the rules. Um, problem submissions, again, please don't submit problems that are too general. In the last couple of weeks, we've had some people submitting problems like, you know, how do I get faster at verbal? Not really something that we can address because it depends on the question type and it depends on your own skill set. It's, it's an unfairly general question. It's not something we could conceivably <coughs> address in the time period of one study hall. On the flip side of that coin, also please don't submit problems that are too specific. For instance, don't ask about one problem and ask about a couple of answer choices. That's what the forums are for. So if you have a question about which you really just want to know one answer choice, why is this right, why is this wrong, um, the, our forums are for that. So generally our forums have a decently fast turnaround time, so you'll get your answer there. Finally, personal issues also not appropriate for the study hall. Remember that this is a program that's watched by, it's attended by usually between 30 and 50 individuals and is watched as a recording by hundreds if not thousands of people. So one person's individual study plan is definitely not something for us to address. Again, the forum has a place for that. There's a folder in the forum called General Questions. That's the very first folder that comes up when you show the forum. So that's where you would want to post questions about your personal issues. As far as what you should see, you should see topics of intermediate depth. If you want to submit a single problem, feel free, but make sure you tie it in to a more general question about that topic. So if you really just want to know about a single problem, please post it on the forums. However, if you have a single problem and there's a tie in to a more general question, then of course, feel free to ask. Um, don't forget, you need to give the source of the problem. So and it needs to conform to our acceptable guidelines for sources. So, for example, no official guide. Also, none of the other banned sources. If you're not sure which sources are okay and not okay, please check the general quant and verbal folders and you'll see a list. Um, just more reminders, please don't submit official guide problems and please don't submit single questions. Official guide we can't do for copyright reasons, so we, we can't take those on our internet. We can't take those on our forums or study halls at all, so we can't use these by express request of GMAC. Um, also, remember that the purpose of the, the entire reason why our forums exist for is for this exact purpose of single questions. So if you have a single question that's not tied into other things, then feel free to post it on the forum and we can address it. Okay, um, any questions? Give me a smiley face icon if you understand these rules, please. The smiley face icon is over there. Give me a smiley face if you understand these rules. Okay. Um, also, please check the archives for topics. We have now done somewhere around 40 study halls, all but two of which have been done by me. So there are a lot of topics that have already been covered. And 
a number of people have submitted topics that we've already done, like basically old ground that we've already covered. So the deal is this, if you are going to submit a topic, make sure you do two things. First, make sure you check the archive and make sure that that topic is not already in the archive. Second, if the topic is already in the archive, please watch that video and then see whether there are any aspects that are not covered. So if you want to submit a topic that has already been covered, you must specify what aspect you'd like to see that has not already been covered. So specify what aspects you would like to see. And these should be aspects that have not been covered already. Because one goal of mine here is not to double up on topics. I mean, if we wind up doing, you know, 200 of these study halls, then at some point I'm sure we'll have to double up. But the idea is to have new topics each time. And so in order to accomplish that goal, we need to make sure that we don't double up on topics. We need to make sure we don't repeat the topics of previous study halls. So in order to help us with that, please check out the archives before you post. Any questions? If you have questions, please type them in the text box. If not, we are going to get going here. Um, by the way, just make sure you understand how this works with the qu when there are questions. What you will see in the corner underneath the list of attendees of the session, what you should see is this, answer buttons. I mean, it might look a little bit different on your screen, depending. But smiley face, please, if you see these answer buttons. Okay, these answer buttons are what you will use to answer all multiple choice questions. Please, please use these answer buttons to answer multiple choice questions. Please do not answer questions in the text box. And if anybody is worried about this, when you select an answer button, no one else will see your answer. Because that, that's the reason why we're doing the answer buttons. Because it'll, it's kept private until the end of the question. Not so much for privacy reasons as just because we don't want other people to have to be unduly influenced by answers of people who have finished earlier. Also, this is one thing that's caused a few people issues in previous study halls, so just to make sure we're on the same page. Do not click your answer more than once. Because if you click again, what it will do is erase the answer that you have clicked. So please only click on the button one time. Probably obvious to most of you guys, but um, there's always a, somebody somewhere who clicks on the button like 12 times. So make sure you don't. Okay, again, for those of you who are latecomers, the main theme of these problems is which modifiers they're going to be sentence corrections, all of which contain the word which in some way, shape, or form. Um, I anticipate that there will be some side discussions of various types, but all of these problems are connected by having a which modifier in them at some point. Okay. Um, if you have any questions before we get started, go ahead and type them in the text box. Otherwise, we will look at our first problem. By the way, all problems in today's session are from GMAT prep software. So let's do it. Here's your first problem. And again, please use the answer buttons to solve and indicate your answer. So. Give you a timer on the screen. OK. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, time. Um, please do the key to the answer. Still waiting on Kathy, Curtis, Jay, Brennan, Pratik, Giannis, and Ioana. Okay, so here are your polling results. Still a couple of people who haven't answered the problem, so... But here are the class results. Um, by the way, there are, there are a few non-responses here. Make sure that you know that you're not allowed to do that on, on test day. So one of these non-responses on the bottom is me, but and again, make sure that if you are one of the other four non-responses, on the actual GMAT, you cannot be a non-responder. You have to answer every problem as soon as you get it. So let's look. And in particular, the main theme of today is this whole idea of the which modifier. So let's take a look at it. Here's a which modifier. Here's another one. Can anybody summarize in the text box how does the which modifier work? Okay, yeah, so most of you have this idea down. Um, let's do a basic summary. The which modifier does two things. The first thing is that it must modify a noun. The second thing about it is this noun should precede the comma. Now, as far as how exactly it needs to precede the comma, that's the subject of the next few problems in this session. So sometimes you can have small intervening constructions between this noun and the comma, but that's the main theme of today's discussion. But the point is, the two big things that you need to know about which are that it modifies a noun, and that noun should be at least reasonably directly in front of the comma. Um, notice that Number one is totally contradictory to spoken English. Like, if you're not a native speaker of English, this actually won't be as much of a problem for you. But note that this use completely contradicts spoken English usage. In, in, in spoken English, the word which is, is almost always used to modify an entire clause. So, like for instance, in spoken English, people will say sentences like, there was a big accident on the freeway, which means I'm going to be late. And in spoken language, that's considered acceptable, but not in written language. In written language, it has to modify a noun. So if you look at choices A and D here, what is which pointing to? Text box, please. In choices A and D. Yeah, it's pointing to Jupiter. Because there are no other nouns in the vicinity. There's, there's, there's no other constructions that it could possibly point to. So which points to Jupiter? Okay, so one thing here, it can't point all the way back to massive planets. So that's too far away. In other words, a couple of you guys are saying massive planets. Let's clarify that. The which modifier cannot jump over an entire modifier with commas. So in other words, the kind of sentence that we're looking at here is 
blah, 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 more than 80 massive planets, comma, a bunch of stuff, comma, which, you can't make this jump. So to the people who are saying massive planets, no, that's, you're not allowed to do that. So the which modifier can't make this jump. The which modifier can't jump over this intervening construction. So in this case, we, we have which trying to point to Jupiter, and there's two problems with that. So let's take this on to the next page, along with the uh, highlights. And then in choices A and D, which would have to point to Jupiter. And this is a problem for two reasons. What are those reasons? Like, why is it incorrect? Quet text box. So one person's mentioned the subject verb agreement. Let's see if we can get the other one. So one reason this modification is incorrect is because of subject verb disagreement. Jupiter is singular. Correct. Jupiter is singular. But the verb circle is plural. Then also there's the meaning of the sentence. Excellent. Remember not to be analyzing just grammar. In the meaning of the sentence, Jupiter is not what is circling other stars. So the intended meaning of the sentence is that the other planets that astronomers have found are orbiting random stars. So yeah, the intent is to modify the other planets. It's correct. So these are incorrect which modifiers. So the, we'll look at the rest of these choices here in a second, but the main point here is to put forward these basic points about the which modifier. It needs to modify a noun, and that needs to be a noun that is placed in front of the comma. So smiley face if those two main points make sense. We're going to refine these as we go through today's study hall, but smiley face if these are OK. So that gets rid of A and D. Not very many people picked A or D, so let's move on to other choices. Um, What's the problem with, um, Sid, I actually don't know what dangling modifier means. I'm sorry. Um, terminology like that I'm generally not familiar with. So I could Google it on a forum or something like that. Let's talk about that green thing real quick. Does anybody see what the problem is with that? text box if somebody can explain. It does have something to do with idioms, but it's, I mean, if you're just saying idiom, that doesn't really explain what the issue is. It's not redundant, and it's not wordy, because there's, there's no wordiness, because these really are two different possibilities. It's, it's kind of like saying greater than or equal to. So, yeah, Sid is starting to get at this here. It needs to be as large as. So here's the more general idea here. Let me give you a different example, and this might help. Um, if you have, if two parallel constructions take different idioms, then both idioms must actually appear. Okay, so for instance, here are, here are two contrasting examples. If you say something like x is either bigger or smaller than y, then this is actually correct. We'll talk about y in a second. 
But if you say something like x is greater or equal to y, then this is incorrect. The reason why the reason why the first of these is acceptable is that bigger and smaller both go with than. So you could say bigger than or smaller than, but you don't have to. The idea is that this instance of than works with both of those. It's bigger than y or smaller than y. So That's all covered by what's written in that sentence. On the other hand, the problem here is that you don't say greater to, you say greater than. So this sentence is incorrect because the requisite idioms are greater than and equal to. So those are not the same as each other. So you can't just say than and you can't just say to. Because if you just put one of those in there, then what you're doing unwittingly is excluding the other one. So in this case, you need both. So you would have to actually say x is greater than or equal to y. Um, one person in the text box said that as large or larger is redundant. It, it, it's not. It's not redundant because it's kind of like saying greater than or equal to. Like these, these are not the, the same thing. So including both of them is actually a meaning thing. Like if you said bigger or larger, then obviously that would be redundant because bigger and larger are the same thing. But this is not redundant and neither is that. But the same issue here is with as large. You need both idiomatic constructions as large as or and you need to have larger than. Both of those are required. So the ones that don't, the ones that have as large or larger than are incorrect. Smiley face if that aspect makes sense. So, okay. Um, someone in the text box wrote something like greater to or equal to. I, I think you meant to write greater than because greater to doesn't work. Um, any questions? If you have questions, go ahead and put them in the text box. Okay. Most of them as large or larger than Jupiter and circling other stars. Um, so there's let's talk about that question. Question is, is and circling correct? So, from the text box. Um, not really, because it doesn't really make sense. Um, it, it's grammatically, it's fine, but if you putting this in parallel with a statement about the size of these planets is is weird. Like the, the, because these uh, th these are not the same type of observation. So a parallel construction doesn't really make a ton of sense. It makes more sense to use a modifier. Be, which is not a parallel construction because these are two very different and independent observations. So most of them as large and circling other stars. Um, the other thing about this is that the intended meaning of the sentence is that most of the planets are as big as or bigger than Jupiter. But 
all of them are circling other stars. So it, there's also a meaning error if you put these things in parallel. So if you say most of them x x x x x x x x x and circling other stars is also a meaning error because it it suggests that the same group it's like a subgroup of planets that are larger than Jupiter are the ones that circle other stars. So, I mean, that's not the right meaning. The, the meaning of the sentence is they found, I mean, planets have to circle some star, otherwise they're not planets. So, the meaning of the sentence is that they found a bunch of planets that all circle other stars. And most of those are Jupiter size or bigger. So you need to state those things separately because they're not they're not qualifying the same group of stars. Okay. Um, anything else about this quickly? Otherwise, we'll move on to another one. Let's see, I see a couple of people typing. Sure. Um, okay. There's a question about the pronoun. The answer to this question was C. Um, there's a question about pronoun ambiguity. I think we actually did a study hall on this, but in general, the best way to deal with pronoun ambiguity is just not to worry about it. I mean, pronoun ambiguity is tested in exactly one problem in the entirety of OG12, OG supplement, and GMAT prep. So pronoun ambiguity has it is is only tested in one current official problem. But there are at least 20 current official problems whose correct answers have technically ambiguous pronouns. So worrying about pronoun ambiguity will just get you off track. Um, we, we did treat this in one of the study halls. In particular, let's see if I can find the date. Um, if you watch the March 31st study hall of this year, then there's more on this topic. But amb pronoun ambiguity is not something you should ever be really worrying about. See the March 31, 2011 study hall. Okay. Um, Satish, as far as can we just say most, um, maybe, maybe not, the GMAT hasn't really done that one way or the other. So it's hard to say. Okay, let's look at another problem. That would be this one right here. Go ahead and try that. Again, please use the answer buttons to indicate your answer. Okay, let's try to choose an answer, please, in the next 15 or 20 seconds, if you can. Also, if you are A. Harris, um, you have text in your text box, which makes it look like you're typing something. So please erase that. Thank you. OK. 
Okay, guys, next uh, 10 or 15 seconds, please choose something. Most of you are doing very well on this. Okay, here are the class statistics. Um, a couple people got logged out and logged back in. But again, if you didn't choose an answer, then please remember that the GMAT is a test where you have to choose an answer. So let's go ahead and take a look at the which modifiers again. Here is which. Here is which. What are those text box, text box, please? What are those modifiers trying to point to? Like, what is the intention of those modifiers? What, what, what are they in, in terms of the meaning of the sentence? What do they actually mean? So it's not the silicon chip. Um, I'm, we're talking about the intention, not what it would grammatically be assigned to. We're just talking about the intention. The, those are intended to refer to the whole idea of the development of the silicon chip, the whole idea of developing this kind of silicon chip. So, I mean, that's the intended meaning, because I mean, if you think about, remember that you always want to figure out what the sentence is trying to say before you dig into these grammar points. The meaning of the sentence is that semiconductor researchers are trying to make a silicon chip that will do these direct light signals. And if that development comes to pass, then it'll lead to smaller semiconductors. Like, it's not the chip itself. The chip itself will not lead to smaller semiconductors. It's that sort of advance in research. So, and to understand that, you have, before you dig into grammar points, you have to start, you have to start by learning what the sentence is saying and, like, you know, thinking about it with basically common sense. So, the sentence is saying that if that, so if this sort of chip were developed, then that advance in research will enable chips to get smaller, will enable semiconductors to become smaller. So that's the meaning. The problem is that this is not a noun. Like this whole idea of developing this sort of special chip is not a noun. It's, it's a verb and a whole bunch of words afterwards. So again, the, the use of which in choice B corresponds mostly to spoken language. Like, this is how people talk. They say blah, 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 which means so and so. And when they say which, they're, they're trying to indicate the entire cluster of words that came beforehand. The problem is in written language, you can't use which like that. That's not how the pronoun works. So if you don't have a noun to point to, then you can't use which. Smiley face if this makes sense. Smiley face icon, please, if that makes sense. So remember, at all times, you have to be able to point to a noun with which. So in this sentence, there is no noun to which which can refer. So it's incorrect. Um, an another thing about this is that it's a waste of time to try to assign which to a noun because you know it's wrong. So note that it's a waste of your time to debate which of these nouns it does refer to because it's wrong regardless. So and this is one thing where, like, a lot of people do this, like, with pronouns and modifiers. Like, they'll, they'll figure out that some pronoun or modifier is wrong because it can't point to what it's supposed to point to. But then, inexplicably enough, they will actually still spend all this time trying to, mod trying to assign that modifier or pronoun. 
make sure that you don't do that. Like, if you know that a modifier or pronoun is wrong, then you can eliminate it. You don't need to bother thinking about what it really does point to. Um, capability of, yeah, that's a little bit weird by comparison. I mean, compared to can transmit and receive, it's definitely inferior in responding to the question in the text box. So that gets rid of the ones with the which modifier. I mean, yeah, transmitting and receiving are definitely parallel. So that, that, that's not a problem. Also, also in response to the text box. So, okay. Um, questions about the which. Okay. Now, someone says to develop and a development that seems redundant. Well, if you think so, I can kind of see where you're going with that, but not really, because they're not doing the same thing. The question is whether the use of develop and development is, is redundant. Not really, because th this is talking about the specific development of the silicon chip, whereas, like, this is the act of actually developing this thing in a research lab, whereas this development refers to the situation once this has been done. So these are actually referring to different things. And, and they look like each other, but this is the word, this is the verb develop, as in, like, making something. So, like, manufa like, instead of develop, you can say manufacture or create, whereas this is not a manufacturing or a creation. This is a development means, like, something that has come to be the case or something that has happened recently. So it's not redundant because they're different things. So, um, yeah. Okay, very few people picked, uh, nobody picked E, so I'm assuming we don't have to worry about E because nobody picked it. Um, in any case, it's the same kind of problem that C does. These are ING modifiers. Does anybody know, I mean, there's a lot of things that could be said about ING modifiers, and I don't, I want to make sure the class doesn't go off on a tangent, but does anybody know what are the tense implications? of ING modifiers. So when you have an ING modifier, what does it imply about the tense of that action? Um, I don't know what present continuous means, but they don't have to be in the present, no. That's incorrect. Um, what Sid says is is right here. Um, besides, I think I think the people who are saying present continuous are talking about verbs, and those are not modifiers. Well, like we're not talking about I am doing this. That's a totally totally different construction. That's a verb. That's not what we're talking about. So not verbs of the form like is or are doing. Like, those are not modifiers. So I, I think this might be what present continuous means. I mean, again, I apologize for not knowing any of this terminology. But um, if you guys are talking about these kinds of verbs, that, that's not what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about modifiers of this sort, very different animal. So let, let's take that to the next page. Um, it's what it's what um, one of the posters named Sid said. So let me just put Sid's text in the box here. Um, what is assumed about the the time frame of these modifiers? Well, here is what's assumed about the time frame of these modifiers. This is this is exactly correct. They take the tense of the surroundings. But by surrounding, what Sid means more exactly is um, they adopt the time frame of the action that, I mean, of the clause to which they are attached. 
So here are a couple of examples. The following sentences are all correct. The ones that are going to appear on the board here as I type them. Um, first sentence is writing papers 150 years ago used quill pens and bottled ink. Sentence. Another correct sentence could say students writing papers in today's schools use Microsoft Word. And finally, last but not least, you could say Sorry, you could say students writing papers 20 years in the future will use dictation software. So these are all correct sentences. So notice the way that writing works. I mean, writing in each case, because remember that modifiers don't have tenses. So like ing is not a verb and doesn't have a tense. So that just adopts this context, that adopts this context, and that adopts this context. So these are all right, and in this case, the writing refers to 150 years ago, this writing refers to right now in today's schools, and this refers to writing 20 years in the future. Um, um, okay, there's a question in the text box. Let me let's come back to that later because we've already handled the which. Um, Sid, I would have to look up what a subordinate clause means, but um, the the development thingy is called an a positive, and we did a we did a unit on that. We'll talk. I mean, I'll put that on the board in a second. Okay, so the problem though is that this is not the same time frame. Like, y you need a different verb. Because if you say, even though it says one day, you can't use leading with ing here. Because the implication of leading is that it's happening right now. So, it's not. I mean, the rest of this is in the present. One goal of semiconductor research is to do this, a development leading to this. Even though it says one day, the use of this modifier is incorrect. Um, same sort of thing here. Notice that that's fixed in the correct answer where they actually use the verb. It may one day lead. May lead is correct. It's uncertain. We don't know if it'll happen or not. Um, there's also, so that, that's the issue in both C and E. Like there's also this comparative issue of can transmit and receive is definitely better than with the capability of transmitting and receiving. So these are not the kinds of things that you want to judge absolutely, but relatively. So when you look at wordiness, make sure that you don't try to judge wordiness absolutely. Instead, only judge wordiness relative to other answer choices. So for instance, if you look at the yellow parts, it should be it should be clear that can transmit and receive is better than with the capability of transmitting and receiving. And same thing with has the capability of transmitting and receiving. I mean, you might not pick those out as wordy by themselves, but in comparison to choice A, they're definitely clumsy and sort of cumbersome. Okay. Um, a couple of other questions that people had about this problem. Um, here is one, there you go, let's see, 
Here's a question from Sid. That's not a run-on. It's it's called an a positive modifier. So check out the September twenty-third study hall. We had a discussion of those. And then also check out OG twelve number eighty-three and one oh three. And that should take care of you there. Um, and JC says, I mean, maybe I'm misunderstanding this question, but I mean, yes, it has to make sense because everything has to make sense. I mean, obviously, if you have a nonsense sentence, it's it's wrong. So. First and foremost, you have to figure out what what are. I mean, maybe I'm misinterpreting the question, but first and foremost, you know, you got to figure out what are we saying. So everything always has to make sense. So if something contradicts the intended meaning, then it's wrong. Okay. Um. Any questions? If not, we'll move on to the next problem in our little bank here. Say a handful of people are typing. Um, leading is not a tense. It's a modifier. There's a whole discussion of that. If you lost your connection, then please watch the recording when it comes out because that would that was like a several minute clip. Um, Let's not worry about rewording the sentence. Um, it's definitely not something that you need to be able to do. Um, the capability of um, SB number two, we we just talked about that here. That's this issue of relative wordiness. I mean, these are not wrong per se, but they're compared to A, they're they're sort of clumsy and awkward and terrible. Um, in in regard to um, Satish, please please watch the recording for that. That was the uh, that was the whole point of the last like five minutes of the study hall. So we don't we don't want to repeat five whole minutes. If it was if it was a brief answer, I would just throw it at you, but it's it's not. Um, this sort of thing, I actually, let me address this not by answering it, but but just by mentioning that it is not a good way to think. Um, don't don't. I don't mean to put Sarah K on the spot here or anything, but do not do this. Don't do it. Like, don't try to reword the sentences in other ways. Like, this is not that's not a relevant skill set. I mean, you will never have to reword a sentence, and it will distract you from what you actually have to do. Because what what inevitably happens when people who are not native English speakers try to reword sentences is that you know they'll come up with rewordings that 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 have something wrong with them for some reason, and so like almost always like in at least ninety nine percent of cases on the forum where people have tried to reword things, even if they're technically correct, there's something wrong with it. Like either it's really awkward or weird or something is stylish realistically wrong with it or it's not a good idea. I mean, the, the, the answer choices that are on the board should be plenty of challenge already. So remember that the only thing you really have to be able to do on these problems is point out what is right and what is wrong. You don't have to be able to rewrite them yourself, which is a totally different skill set. You know, in other words, you don't have to be a writer, you just have to be an editor. Okay, let's move on to another question. Let's look at this. This one is also an OG problem, but it also exists in GMAT prep. So hence, we can use it. Um, go for it. Give me about a minute, 40. Have fun.
Okay, let's try to pick an answer, please. It's almost two minutes. Um, someone is is saying the text is really small. Um, if you're the person saying the text is really small, that probably means you just need to make your window bigger because the text is taking up the whole screen. So it's actually pretty big. Okay. Um, if you don't have an answer yet, please pick one. Um, All right, here, so it looks like people are split between A and E. Let's take a look. Um, how many Dickinson's letters to Susan Huntington Dickinson were written over a period beginning a few years before Susan's marriage, blah, 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 blah. Let, we'll come back to um, B, C, and D here. Well, let's talk about B, C, and D first. This is, I'll make short work of this because it's not the theme of today, but there is, there's a parallel construction of beginning and ending. Um, because there's two things about the time period. And those should be parallel. So, beginning, ending, or that began and ended, or you know something with a parallel structure. You got to have because these are two descriptions of the same of the same time period. So beginning and ending works um, begins in the present and ended is is in the past is not okay because I mean. This this just doesn't make sense by itself because it's not. This was the 19th century, so the present tense here is kind of silly. Um, beginning and that ends definitely not parallel. Beginning, comma ending. The use of a modifier here doesn't make sense. Like you're supposed to have a parallel construction, so. The use of a modifier is illogical here because it makes it sound like ending shortly modifies beginning a few years before her marriage. These are separate statements about the time period, so they should be put into a parallel structure with and. So that's not a parallel structure at all. And then here we have beginning and ending. So. A and E survive the parallelism cut. So now let's take this problem onto the next page. And let's look at the rest of it. So that's the original version. And then the version with, let me kind of put this together in pieces. Okay, let's get choice E on the board. Take just a second. Um, hmm. Okay, here's choice E. Part of this short delay, I had to get it together. Okay, choice E looks like this. And uh, let's get rid of the E. There. And then let's put this up there. There's a reason that all this copying and pasting is happening. Um, so Illuminate would put, if I didn't do it this way, Illuminate would put the wrong things on top of the wrong things. Okay, this is the, the choice E and this is the choice A. Choice A is up there, choice E is down here. So, and then anyone else should be here as well. So let's put that there. Okay, 
choice A and choice E. Um, let's talk about this first. This is incorrect because ing modifiers must, when you have a comma in front of them, they must actually have a, an, an intimate relationship to the clause that precedes them. They must be closely related to the preceding clause. So here are two examples, one of which is correct and one of which is incorrect. If you say my brother took extra classes every semester in college, comma, graduating in three years, versus my brother ate frozen food every night, or every morning in college, graduating in three years. Um, the first of these sentences is correct because this describes an approximate consequence of taking extra classes. This is a direct result of taking extra classes. This sentence is incorrect because there's no relationship. These are two separate observations about my brother. So smiley face if this makes sense. When you use a, a comma ing modifier, you have to have an actual close relationship. Um, generally, there are further restrictions on those relationships. Um, if, let me see if I can grab you guys a link. If you give me about 15 seconds, I should be able to find it. Just a sec. All right. Okay. So here's more on comma ing. If you want to know more about what kinds of relationships that you're supposed to have, you guys can click on that link that's in the window. So in choice A, there's no, the problem with choice A is that there's no relationship. Like, well, it gives a time period and then it says outnumbering her letters to anybody else. So in choice A, the clause is a time period. The, the clause shows the period of time over which the letters were written. Th this has no, there's no direct relationship to, to these letters versus any other letters. So relative numbers of letters versus letters written to other people. I mean, you would have to manufacture a connection totally out of thin air. Like, you, you would have to be like, oh, I'm going to make up the fact that she wrote letters, like, all the time during that period, and also that she didn't write letters to other people during that period. And you'd have to make up a whole bunch of facts that may or may not be true. So, not okay. I mean, like, notice how direct this relationship is. Like, my brother took a whole bunch of extra classes, and thus he graduated in three years. It's a total, immediate, proximate effect. Like, that's the kind of thing that comma ing modifiers are generally doing. So, I mean, you could manufacture some sort of relationship between these, but you would need to make up a whole bunch of facts that are not there in order to do that. So that's, that's why choice A is incorrect. Um, it's actually the only reason why choice A is incorrect. Um, now let's talk about choice C, choice E. Let's talk about this which. 
Um, let's move these clips onto the next page so we have more room to write. There you go. Okay. So here are here's choice E. Let's have a little conversation about this which. What does that modify? Xbox, please. So let's see. A couple of you guys are saying Dickinson, but that's not right because if it were Dickinson, then this would be the wrong answer. So it's not Dickinson. It's it's letters. So here, which modifies letters to Susan Huntington Dickinson. So the lesson that you want to get here is, I mean, what we already know is that which may refer to just a noun, but it may also refer, refer to the construction noun plus prepositional phrase. So I mean, it, it's still referring to this noun, but the point is that it can it's allowed to jump prepositional phrases. So that's probably the best way to to state this case, which is allowed to jump over prepositional phrases if the context or grammar demands that it do so. Yeah, to Susan Huntington Dickinson is a prepositional phrase because to is a preposition. Um, Although, um, what we're going to talk about in a second is, and I'll, I'll use some examples to illustrate this, it'll be confusing, but it can only jump over a prepositional phrase that actually modifies the intended noun. Okay, so like let me show you what, what I'm talking about here. Um, if you say something like, I took pictures of my dog, which are so adorable, or what which are so adorable that they make everyone smile. So in this case, pictures of my dog is actually a unit. Like, of my dog actually is talking about pictures. So this is important because this is the kind of prepositional phrase that you can actually jump. Actually talking about pictures. So we can jump. It. So in this case, which is clearly talking about pictures because it's which are. So it's not the dog. I mean, the dog could be adorable too, but but if it's which are, then we know we're talking about pictures. Now, on the other hand, if you say something like, "I took pictures." in 1995, 
which are so adorable that then this is incorrect. Because pictures in 1995 is not a unit. Like in 1995 doesn't describe the pictures. It describes, it's a totally separate kind of modifier. It talks about when I took the pictures. So therefore you can't, this is an incorrect sentence. You can't jump that kind of prepositional phrase. This is not, in other words, this is not pictures in 1995. So we can't jump it. So what's going on here, this is legit because letters to Susan Huntington Dickinson is actually a noun with a prepositional phrase that modifies it. So this really is letters to this person, so which is allowed to jump that prepositional phrase and talk about letters. Um, on the other hand, if it's a genuinely different prepositional phrase than like this, I took pictures in 1995, not okay. Because these are not pictures in 1995. So there's a couple of things here. I mean, it's a little bit on the complicated side, I guess, when you try to explain it in words. Um, yeah, it is a prep phrase, yeah, because in is a preposition. It's just not the kind of prep phrase that you can jump in this context. Um, please don't use this rule as an abstract rule. Like, the, the best way to remember things like this, yes, rice, 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 I don't know how to say, yes, you can do that. Um, the the best way to recall and use complicated things like this is to remember examples and think by analogy. In other words, if you try to remember this as an abstract rule, like which is allowed to jump over prepositional phrases if the context of grammar demands, however, it must jump over a prep that modify you, well, you're not going to be able to use it. You're not. It's going to be way too complicated. It won't work. I mean, at least I'm not smart enough to do that. Maybe you guys are, but there's in a thousand years, I would never be able to do that. But if you just remember these examples, okay, pictures of my dog, that's fine, because they really are pictures of my dog. But I took pictures in 1995, not okay, because they are not pictures in 1995. Like, that's when I took them, but it doesn't describe the pictures. So things that work like this, or like letters to Susan Huntington Dickinson are fine. Uh, however, things that work like this, not fine. It's basically what's going on here. So questions. So this is E to this problem. And a couple people are typing things. Thanks, Sid. Appreciate it. Um, see what people are typing. Um, there's Venche. You've had text in your text box for a very long time. So if you're typing, then fine. If you're not typing, then please erase it so it doesn't look like you're typing. OK, thanks. Let's move on to another problem. Let's do this one. Go for it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's try it. OK, everybody, um, it's been a lot of time, so. Go ahead and pick something. Okay, looks like basically everybody except for newcomers and people who are logged out. Um, people have stuff. So here are the statistics. OK. Um, yeah, you could say that. OK. So at least I'm, I 
pretty sure you could. This one looks like people are between A and B, but in any case, we have a which that is not underlined. So, but it's still there. That means it still follows the usual rules. So, well, let's figure out the meaning of this. So, what should which modify? Text box, please. Yeah, definitely. So what prohibited the export of blah, 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 like this modifier should point to the act. Okay, now note that the Woolens Act of 1698 is actually a unit. So it's fine to jump that, that of 1698. It's kind of like a picture of my dog or the letters to Susan Huntington Dickinson. This is actually the Woolens Act of 1698. That, that's a thing. Like the Woolens Act of that year is a thing. So the witch can feel free to modify that. So this is okay, which you can jump over that and go to the Woolens Act. On the other hand, this is England, so that's not okay, and that's England, so that's not okay. So the ones that modify England are incorrect. So Questions about that. Between the choices that people actually picked, which are A and D, oh, sorry, A and B, this is another parallelism issue. So let's look at this against both American and Irish competition versus both against. So this might seem sort of nitpicky, but you do have to make sure that that you understand how these things work. So when you have two part parallel constructions, so I'll give you the brief summary if you want more details and practice, check out the, um, there's a Thursday lecture on this, which is May 13th, 2010. Thursday lecture. But the basic summary is this. When you have a two-part parallel signal, like, for instance, both X and Y, or not only something, but also the only and the also are optional, um, you know, either or, et cetera. Um, the parts that follow these signals must match. So if you have the both x and y, the x have to uh, the x has to match the y. So if you this is enough to resolve the difference between these two choices because if you say both against American and Irish, that doesn't work. So. Let's take a look. A and B. The, the construction here is both X and Y. So that's both and. That's both and. Um, people who are marking on the board, please don't. Okay. 
All right. So um, if you look at both against American and Irish, this doesn't work because against American is after both, and Irish is after and. So this is incorrect. On the other hand, if you say both American and Irish, then that is correct because it's both nationality and other nationality. So that's why A is incorrect. It's not par it's not properly parallel. So for more on that, again, you can visit the study hall recording of May 13th, 2010. Any questions? Um, again, rewriting sentences, not a good idea. So make sure that you can analyze existing structures and that should be, remember the warning on the previous slide about the dangers of rewriting them yourself. Okay. Um, looks like one other person is not really. Um, those are basically the same. In order to protect, to protect. Yeah. Okay. Let's try to get one more of these in there before we have to run. So, yeah, for protecting is not correct in this kind of situation. So, if it's the intention of the, yeah, if it's the intention of the action you use to protect for that. Okay. One more. This is one problem that a couple of you guys actually submitted. So, look familiar to some of you guys. This is also GMAT prep. Go for it. Okay, guys, it's something like two minutes. So, uh, if you haven't picked anything, please pick something. That basically means guess if you have to. Remember, if you're shy um, on the test, you don't have the option of not guessing. So make sure you train yourself to guess. You need to just get rid of these problems one way or the other. So Sarah Kay and uh, I think Yan just got logged out. But Sarah Kay, you got to pick something. And uh, Jason C, you got to pick something. And Pradeep, you got to pick something. If any of you guys already had one, then you probably hit your answer twice. Remember that I'll raise it. Okay, pretty if you're good. Jason C, if you have an answer, uh, it's time. Okay, here's your here are your responses. Again, if you are a non response, remember the GMAT doesn't allow you to do that. So um, I, I noticed there's a couple of you guys who have actually been logged out over eight times in this session and are keep, you know, I mean, if that happens, remember that these sessions are recorded and the recordings are published online and kept online indefinitely. So, you know, I mean, if you're having that much connection trouble, you might as well just, just give it up for now and watch the recording. Um, okay. Anyway, let's talk about which. Let's talk about this witch versus this witch. Remember what we said about this kind of thing. Um, if you say, I took pictures of my dog, then pictures of my dog are actually a thing. Just like letters to Susan Huntington Dickinson are something. Like there are a bunch of letters to this person. These are a bunch of pictures of my dog. This was the act of, of 1698. These, these are all actual things. Noun plus prepositional phrase as a unit. On the other hand, the problem with choice B is that in 1999 is not, it's, you, you, don't, you don't have an act in 1999. So this is a thing, but this is something else. Um, so you, you can't you can't jump this prepositional phrase. This is not allowed. This is kind of like saying I took pictures in 1995, which 
you're not allowed to do that unless you're trying to modify 1995. Like if you say I took pictures in 1995, comma which was the last year I was in town, then that's fine, because then which is modifying 1995. But here it doesn't work, because this is not, it's, it's not this act in 1999. It's they passed this act, and then this is another description. So this is a jump that you're not allowed to make. So B is a lot like, again, don't think in terms of abstractions and rules, think in terms of examples. B is a lot like I took pictures in 1995, which were dot, dot, dot. In other words, this prep phrase is a separate description. So you can't jump it. So that that's the point here. Um, and B is is exactly like this sentence in that regard. So what C does is is it avoids this issue entirely by just sticking that prepositional phrase in front of the passage, w which also works in the sense that this applies to where it's supposed to apply. Like in 1999 is actually talking about the passage, so this is better. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, we're running down on time here, so I'll give you a little bit of a summary about what's wrong with the others. Um, it, yeah, if it was the act, if it was like this, that's why I chose these two problems to put next to each other, because the contrast is, is stark. Like, the act of 1698 is a thing. Like, that's the act of 1698. But if you say in, that's not how in is used. Like, you don't say this law in that year. You, when you in that year should modify an, an action that happened in that year. So, um, no, C is it's modifying the, the nouns right next to it. Yes, it's modifying the act like it's supposed to. So, um, SB question in the text box. I'm not sure what you mean by ambiguous, but uh, no, no, it isn't ambiguous. Maybe you can explain what you mean by that. Um, okay, so here are some things that are, I'll just rattle these off um, with the other choices. Um, choice A led to passing is not an idiomatic construction. Also, the comma plus ing modifier is incorrect. In other words, the, the comma plus allowing um, there's like this needs to modify the preceding action, which which it doesn't. The preceding action is led to. That doesn't make sense. There's a link in your text box for more on comma plus ing modifiers, but this would have to modify that action up there, which is so now it does. So that's incorrect. Um, Choice D and E led to the act doesn't work. You can't lead to a concrete um, a concrete object. So, like you know, for example, if you say this. Um, this this breakthrough 
led to cell phones. This is incorrect. This is not this is not idiomatic. But if you say something like this breakthrough led to the development of cellular technology of cell phones. Or if you said this breakthrough led to cellular technology, both of those things are abstractions. So yeah, this breakthrough led to the development of cell phones, because that's an abstraction. So there you go. That's one thing wrong with those two choices. You can only lead to abstractions. So same thing like, you know, you can't, so, so things can't lead to a baby, but they can lead to the conception of a baby. Same kind of thing. So there's that. Um, we're running out of space here. A couple other, um, let's see. Um, because I think perhaps uh, SSS, you got to do better than that. If you can provide the example, that'd be good. But otherwise, it's kind of hard to respond to that. Um, let's see, more things wrong with D and E. Also, and doesn't make sense. Like when and is used as as a connector, it should connect to separate and independent things. So for instance, if I say this, there was a ton of traffic on the freeway and I was late to work. Does anybody know a text box? What what does this imply about why I was late to work? N all of you guys know, not not at all. Um, the implication here is actually that I was not late because of the traffic. Because again, and means separate. So no, it doesn't mean traffic was the reason. It means exactly the opposite of this. So this sentence implies that I was late for a reason other than the traffic. Because what and does, this and that means they are separate. So if I needed, if I actually wanted to imply that, like a causation here, I'd have to use modifier for that. So what this sentence would be doing is something like, oh, look, here are two bad things that happened to me today. There, number one, there was a ton of traffic. And separately, number two, um, I was late. So make sure you know this. When people speak, this is not how this works. But in written language and unless you have other connectors, it implies separate. So if there's a relationship, you must use either a modifier or other connectors. So like an example of using other connectors is there was a ton of traffic and I was thus late to work. If you have the word thus in there, then you are fine. Because this is not just and anymore. This is and thus. But if you use the word and by itself, it actually implies that these are two things that have nothing to do with each other. So the problem here is this. These are not separate. So that's incorrect. Again, that's a spoken language issue. A um, couple of other things if you, let's see, it's an idiom thing. 
Um, and the, please try to spell words correctly when you type uh, messages, you know, with re with something and thought and stuff like that. If you could take the extra half a second to write that correctly, it'd be appreciated. Um, kind of took me a while to figure out what T H O T E was. So, um, intent of to intent to verb is not okay, and intent of verbing is okay. Um, finally, the whole idea of passage versus passing. I mean, if you have a dedicated noun form of an action, then that form is preferred to the ing form if you have a choice. So for instance, if you say something like the, if you say like the destroying of this building, brought tears to the eyes of its former residents. This would be compared to destruction. Destruction is better. So, I mean, th this is not as good and this is better. I mean, it's not strictly wrong, but remember that a lot of these errors are comparative. So, if you have a choice between passing and passage as nouns, then you should use passage. So, if, if there's no dedicated noun form, then the ing is fine. So, So, for instance, if you have something like, yeah, the the rising of the moon um, is a religious event in some cultures. Um, there's no word like risation or like risage, so this is fine. So make sure you know. That. Again, this is comparative. Like, risage, risation, etc. Um, this is comparative. You don't have to memorize this. All you have to do is note the contrast. Like if you see the destroying and the destruction, you should take destruction. Same thing if you see passing and passage, then you should take passage. I mean, for the people who said that passage means like a hallway, well, yeah, it can also mean that. But there's lots of words that mean more than one thing. I mean, a passage can also mean a reading passage, as you guys well know. I mean, it can mean like a reading comprehension passage, but, but yeah, I mean, words have more than one meaning, so, yeah. Um, okay, we got to go here. We're definitely way over time at this point, so if you have any business questions or anything like that, um, go ahead and throw those at us. Otherwise, let's call it a day. Um, we don't really have time for any more academic questions, unfortunately. I got to, got to hit the bricks here. But if you have any questions about quick admin stuff or anything like that, then feel free to ask. Otherwise, we are out of here. Okay, thanks guys. Have a good two weeks. Good night and good luck. The session on the 8th of September should be I think a half hour earlier, so I think 6.30 to 8 Eastern, 3.30 to 5 Pacific. I think that's my understanding of the time frame. So, all right, guys, I'm going to log you out in a short moment here. Have a good two weeks. Good night and good luck. <laughs>